All right, so I am a Windows enthusiast and I have used Windows on my machine for, oh wait, hold on. This is my computer. I use Windows all the time. Definitely don't enjoy using other operating systems. Right, anyways. So this is Windows 10. It's a fresh copy. I am logged in with my Microsoft account, but it's fresh. I haven't done anything. I haven't opened anything. Just, yeah, literally just a fresh install. I could not install Windows 11. I was going to do this video on Windows 11, but I couldn't install it because um, it seems like my system doesn't meet the minimum requirements for Windows 11 in terms of that TPM security chip. So apparently if your main rig doesn't support it, then you can't virtualize it either or something like that. I really wasn't just keen to try and get it to work. So I decided I'm going to do Windows 10. The purpose of this video is to show you some general Windows maintenance tips. Okay, so this is Windows Home. So it's sort of like the base uh, model. So whatever settings I've got access to, you should have access to as well. Even if you have Windows Pro or Education or whatever, you should have similar, maybe not Education, um, but hey, we'll see. Most people should have Home or Pro, so just go for it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our little mouse pointer here and we're going to right click. You'll notice as I drag my mouse, you'll actually see the Windows cursor behind my um, behind my actual cursor. Anyways, so we're going to right click there. First, I want you to have a look at is task manager. Task manager is very powerful. If you click on the more details tab, oh wow, it, cha it, it kind of changes completely. And it's an extremely useful tool. You can expand it a little bit there. You can just see exactly how much, you know, stuff is being done on your computer. Um, and this is where you're going to want to come if your computer is feeling slow, feeling sluggish. You're going to want to come to Task Manager, okay? Now, <clears throat> without going into too much technical detail about how computers work and what might cause it to slow down, um, let's, let's see. We've got a CPU, that's the brains of the operation, but not the memory. That just does the processing. Then we have the memory, which is your temporary memory. It's like your short-term working memory kind of thing. Then you have the disk. That's where you save all your stuff. That's like the long-term storage. Then we have network. These four give you a good idea of what's happening with your system. Now, this is a fresh install. I don't have any funny programs on here. Um, but if any one of these three is close to being a hundred percent then that would cause your system to slow down a lot of people don't really think about disks but if you're running an older computer especially on a hard disk drive the spinning platters the ones that make those little ticking noises if that thing is like over 80 percent usage it's going to make the whole system feel slow because if i click here and i want to load a program it's going to have to load that program from the disk. And if the disk is in use, it's going to take a long time to load because there, it, it's trying to do too many things from the disk at once. So you might have a rogue, you know, program that's writing something to disk, such as Windows itself. Sometimes Windows um, services breaks and they, um, you know, they, they try and make your system faster by predicting what you're going to do on your machine and then it, it tries to load those programs into memory from the hard drive but by doing that it's making the computer slow at that moment um, while it's loading it and then you end up not using that program and then you've had that slow machine for literally no reason so what you can do is you'll notice if I click on this the, that little arrow appears you see it that tells you that it's sorting it either in ascending or descending okay either ascending or descending order now you want to have it in a descending order meaning the one at the very top is going to be the most so that tells you now what program is using the most memory okay now again this is a fresh system there's nothing there um, there's a few things here but they're not actually using much okay 
let's go into our memory as an example here. RAM, the RAM here, the memory, anti-malware service executable is using the most RAM at the moment. If you spot a program in here that seems unfamiliar or dodgy, um, that you did not install, you can Google it. You can actually right click and say, search online. And then go and see if it is actually a legitimate program that's there to help your PC run, like this anti-malware service executable, that's a legitimate one. Or you could tell whether it's complete garbage that needs to perhaps not be there in the first place, okay? I mean, literally, <laughs> I just want to browse the web. Now I've got to go through all of this nonsense, okay? I can't even close out of this. Or can I? Let's see. Now all of a sudden that edge is officially open, you can see, oh well, it's using a lot more memory. Now, if you know this program is not something you want and not something that is a requirement for some of the other programs you use, you can kill it. Um, you can end task. This doesn't always work, especially with some of the Microsoft, Microsoft stuff, but um, other malicious tasks normally would end. And you now actually want to go, once you've established that you don't want that thing, that that thing is bad for your system, you want to go and uninstall it. So I'll show you how to do that right now. Now, we are not going to uninstall Microsoft Edge. It's the only browser I've currently got installed. So, um, But I'll take you to where you need to go. Uh, you can click on this little settings icon. Um, I just want to double check all the list, this list here. No, okay, it doesn't have it in this list. But settings is there, so you can right click and click on settings takes you to the same place I believe anyways so I'll have to blur out some of this information in the uh, in the edit um, I don't want y'all to know my private email address but anywho, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for oh, by the way you can find a whole bunch of stuff in here um, we are going to say I'm not gonna try and remember where this stuff is I'm just gonna search for programs okay Oh, there we go. Add or remove programs. You want to go to add or remove programs. And you want to go and look for that program that you found in Task Manager. Remember, right-click Task Manager. Once you find that culprit. Oh, what is, what is Wasapix? Wasapix? What is that? Hmm. Okay, that is most likely going to be a... Oh, excuse me, my, my sign is this. Um... That's probably going to be a legitimate Windows process. Sorry, my hay fever is crazy with, with all this weather we've been having. But, you know, you can search it and you can see, uh, is it something you have to really worry about? Um, it's a Windows 10 system process. Okay, so screw it. You know, it's related to the Windows Store, which I don't plan on using. But, hey, it's running. It's running. And it's definitely doing something. <laughs> it's using nearly 20% of my CPU. But... Um, oh, there, it actually, it's now, it's, mm, wow, it's something that I don't use, and I don't plan on using the store, but uh, anyways, let me not rant about Windows and all this inaccuracies. Anyways, if you found the uh, offending program, uh, you want to look for it over here, so let's say the offending program was, let's, you know what, let's see if we can uninstall it. Oh, look, Microsoft doesn't allow you to uninstall Microsoft Edge, not via these channels anyways. Um... But yeah, let's look for anything that we can uninstall. Microsoft Store, can't uninstall. Hmm, Office? Ah, that we can uninstall. So let's uninstall Office. Okay, if we don't want Office, we've got our own programs we want to use, so we can uninstall Office. Another thing that starts up automatically that I don't use is this thing. Okay, so I don't want to sign in. Man, I'm going to have to really examine this video closely to make sure I've blurred out all the things. Close it. I don't want to use it. Close it. Where did it go? OneDrive, 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 OneDrive. So let's look for OneDrive in here, right? Let's see if it's there. It used to be here, but you see it's not there, so I can't uninstall OneDrive, yet it starts up automatically, which brings me to the next section. Once you uninstalled all the malicious, useless apps that you don't need, um, which, you know, would help speed up your machine. Um, you can close this. And now we are going to go to, what did I say? Oh, yeah. We're going to go back to start to Task Manager. 
right click on start click on task manager we're gonna go here to the startup tab start up okay now i just said i don't want this to start because i don't use it and a lot of these programs that start automatically what is all this nonsense windows what is i just i just wanted to see what apps was open i didn't want to see what is this ah guys I, I i'm sure by now you would have realized that in the beginning when i said i'm a windows enthusiast i was joking <laughs> i don't use windows this is not my main machine this is a yeah okay can we close this please thank goodness okay anyways Back to what we were doing. So here's a list of all the apps that automatically start up with your machine. Some of them, if they are malicious, they can hide themselves in various ways, but most of them would show up here. Now, this really has a big effect on what you want to do with your laptop. If you have something like Steam or Electronic Arts, you know, um, the EA app or Ubisoft or uh, Skype or oh, I don't know, any other program, Discord, that starts up automatically. Um, you don't always want to use that app when you start up your machine. So let's say, here's an example. You want to just jump into some schoolwork. So you want to switch your laptop on, log on to your, onto your portal and, and start your lessons. But now you have to wait like a half an hour for all these apps to start up, okay? Well, you can come to this list and you can disable them from starting up automatically. Now, OneDrive is disabled. It won't start up the next time I start my computer. Microsoft Edge is a web browser. You might be asking yourselves, but why does Microsoft Edge, a web browser, automatically start up when you start your machine? Heck, I don't know. All I know is Microsoft has made some changes to the system that somehow requires Microsoft Edge to function in the background for some of the services. It's probably for all of this web-based stuff okay and again can we just close this how like how do you actually close this oops it is a virtual machine so it's not like it's not like perfect there we go okay anyways um but yeah that's the other thing come and disable as much as you can here keep security related things on okay um uh, and, and the other thing is antivirus guys Microsoft def uh, Windows uh, Defender is actually really, is actually really good. Uh, you don't really have to. Um, you actually really don't have to get a third-party, you know, standalone antivirus program. Um, if you are just gonna be using your computer for basic things, and gaming and things like that. However. The moment you start downloading things from the internet on a regular basis, so if you're gaming and you're downloading a lot of mods and you're downloading uh, maybe some pirated content or anything like that, then obviously um, a well-known, reputable third-party antivirus vendor might be for you. However, <laughs> some of those also, you know, especially if you're pirating content, um, game cracks and things might might be deleted by that and you won't be able to play the pirated content so just keep that in mind but in general the windows defender sort of windows security that it ships with is pretty decent just don't do stupid things online okay um don't click on any dodgy ads and whatever you do don't do the following why is my pc slow if you Google something like, why is my PC slow? Or how can I make my PC perform faster? You're going to be thrown with a whole bunch of stuff. What? No, it didn't close unexpectedly. I closed it. Uh, start ending rewards. What? Microsoft is really turning into like a video game, honestly. <laughs> Anyways, when you search this, depending on what you're searching with, um, I see Bing isn't too bad, but you might come across some stuff that might not be great, okay? Um, Avast, I haven't used it in a long time, but it, it might work, but it does also, the free version does also push the, the paid stuff quite a lot, so if you don't like ads, don't go for it. But any sort of program that shows up in your search results that claims to be a PC booster or a tune-up or something like that, stay away from it. Stay away from it. I'm not saying Avast or AVG is bad, 
But what I'm saying is just be careful when you search things. Some of those applications can actually be harmful. What they do is they come in here and they edit some of your system files. They delete things you don't want to be deleted. Um, or they themselves actually just run in the background and th take up more system resources and end up slowing your computer down more often. Okay, so let's now go through the steps I showed you. If your computer is slow and running sluggish, you know, and you know that it can perform better because when it was new, it was great. Assuming, obviously, you've cleaned out all the dust out of the system and, uh, you know, the hardware is fine. What you want to do is first right click, go to Task Manager. Okay, on Windows 11, find Task Manager. I'm sure there's a Task Manager. It'll work in a similar fashion. Then click on the Show More Details. Okay, you want to click on the More Details button. Then you're going to come here, you're going to see what is using large quantities of your stuff, okay? Here, anti-malware -mal service executable is already starting to use more and more of my RAM as, as the day goes on. Anyways, you want to find something that is malicious. All this stuff, this is a fresh install, so none of this is malicious. But you want to find something, you know, see if there is anything that looks a little bit sketchy. If you suspect it looks sketchy, you can simply right click on it, say search online. Once you've searched it online, make up your mind whether it should be there or shouldn't be there. If it shouldn't be there, then you want to end it and go and take steps to remove it. If it is a program, you can remove it with add and remove programs. Add and remove programs, okay. You can come here, you can search it if you want, or you can scroll and delete a whole bunch of other stuff that you don't need, you know. Um, and yeah, once that is done, you want to close out here. You want to go back to Task Manager and you want to double check your startup. Okay, you want to double check your startup. Once you're in there with your startup, you want to double check that things are disabled. I disable these two things because I don't use these services at all. But um, as you saw earlier, Microsoft doesn't re really provide you with an easy way of um, uninstalling those. So that is my little short guide. Um, we are at 17 bloody minutes. <laughs> that is my little short guide on how to quite safely speed up your, your machine if it is being slow. The moment you search other things, you're going to find all sorts of scripts and hacks and things. You can go and do that if you want. Just know that if you're not a tech savvy user, you might mess something up. But uh, what I've shown you here today is sort of like an easy way for someone who's not necessarily a computer um, genius or a technical person to try and speed up their machine. Okay, Get rid of some of those programs that you haven't used in six months or, you know, six years even, get rid of some of the auto starting startup stuff. And uh, that should help speed up your system. Anyways, that's it for me. I hope you guys find this helpful. If you did, please do leave a like, comment and subscribe. I am a Linux user and I do recommend you move over to Linux if you um, are getting tired of Microsoft's shenanigans. Um, but yeah, that's a video for another day. Bye.